Caleb here. Hey, I lost you for a second. Oh. All right, Bernard, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Good. So I've got Caleb on the phone, and I went over the details of the house. Uh, Caleb, did you have any questions about it? Uh, yeah, mostly. Uh, so my questions start with a story. Uh, hi, Bernard. Um, I uh, hey. just to let you know a little bit about myself. I'm on the phone because I end up doing the underwriting for our, um, you know, our non-cash deals. Anything that's outside the realm of just a, a cash offer ends up coming across my desk. And so I like to to interview people and see what it is that we can do so that we can structure a deal that uh, that's not one sided. Right. I want to be collaborative and, and figure out a way to work together on uh, buying and selling the house. So would you mind giving me a little bit of background as to uh, what's going on? You guys got the house and you're looking to sell it. What's what's the story there? Well, I mean, I honestly hadn't really planned on it, but I mean, you know, I might consider it, but uh, I was telling Calvin, yeah, basically I moved here, I want to say, yeah, we closed on the house May 20th of last year, and I moved in about a month later, so I've been here for about eight months now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the property um, is a very large property, as you you all know it's 37, 96 square feet, 0.97 mm -hmm. acres. The property has a lot of potential. And Calvin was saying that you guys may be interested in possibly turning it into a bed and breakfast. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful it house. It has that potential. Yes. Uh, and then, I mean, you've got a lot of space here if you wanted to add something or mm -hmm. make a little park in the back for the guests. I mean, you, there's so much potential with about an acre of property here to deal with. Um, you know, it's got five bedrooms, three baths. The interior of the house is very well kept and it's, you know, it's up, you know, moving ready. The exterior does need a little bit of a restoration, basically a paint job. It does have a new roof, metal roof that was installed three years ago. Nice. Um, the property was built, yeah, built in 1900. It does have a pool. So, I mean, uh, you would have to clean that out, maybe put a new liner in it um, for the guests if you decided to keep the pool. And sure. that would be a good, you know, it would bring a lot of guests to the B&B &B knowing that there's a pool on the premise. So, yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> anyway, but yeah, my interest, though, if I do and do this with you guys is that I would like to have, first of all, know that I'm going to be able to get another property and be able to pay for that property since it's not going to be cash mm -hmm. and i want to make sure that the payments that you guys will be paying me every month that's correct right you'll be ma making monthly payments on it and you know after you put the down payment at closing or whatever we agree on and what price is the maximum because i was talking to calvin about that as far as if i were to consider this how much of the money you need to I had not determined a max a max price yet. I I, uh, I wanted to see what sort of terms you were willing to consider and see if there's any questions I needed to answer before we start making offers. Because my my right. thing is I don't I don't want to just sling offers at somebody and hope something sticks. I want to I want to work together and build a plan that you know everybody's on board with before we put it on paper. Right, and this would be a thirty year term or less, or would it be less? Yeah. So we generally structure payments to be over a 30 year term. Yes. I'm sorry. Say again. A 15 year term would be out of the question. I'm not saying it would be out of the question, but generally at, at using something as a, a rental property, even as an Airbnb, a 15 year puts us a little bit risky. And I don't what I don't want don't want to do is put you at risk of us getting upside down on payments now. And so that's I I won't go into a deal that I'm not extremely confident we can support will support itself, number one. And then number two, that we can support even if it doesn't perform as expected. And so a 15 year just puts us on a little bit of the wrong side of that that spectrum where if something goes wrong, that's that's a lot of pressure on us. So the 30 year is pretty standard. And that's the that's the way we go. Okay. So uh, well, that being said, um, like I did tell, I mentioned to Calvin is that you know I would have to 
go and then be able to get properties in areas that I might be interested in. Um, that's not too wrong for me. You know, so maybe get in contact with the realtor and see what she might say, you know, as far as... Can, can you go back a little, a little bit? I'm catching a lot of wind noise. Can you go back a little bit and start again? Oh, yeah. Let me go inside. I'm outside. So that oh, will okay. eliminate a lot of the wind. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that um, I would have to go and just look at some areas that may be, be of interest to me as far as uh, another home to live in. Right. And also uh, mentioning that to you, I had mentioned to Calvin, he had 30 days to move out. Um, that may not be sufficient amount of time if I did consider or we did come up, you know, to do a deal. I would need more time than that because I have a lot of stuff in this house. You know what? I end up liking more more time anyway. So actually, so that uh, that town, Swainsboro, is not that big of a town. And so to be honest, from an investor standpoint, um, sometimes it takes a while for us to raise enough capital in the smaller markets because everybody's looking for the big markets that are moving everything fast and 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 crazy. So I actually do like a little bit more time in smaller markets anyway. So I'm completely comfortable okay. with that. Okay. So how much time max would you be able to give me, if, you know, say I needed like, I mean, Cal Calvin's probably going to slap me, but I'll say 90 days. Okay. Yeah. And that would be like more than enough time. I mean, I could be actually not stress about the move and then, you know, yeah. be able to get everything out probably prior to that. But yeah, that would definitely give me um, enough time. So yeah, I don't want to be stressing over this because you know I didn't plan on moving anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the deal. That's how we make it a, 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 cons a consultative collaborative team team thing, right? We want to put together an offer on paper that makes sense because we've already discussed it. And so if you need more time to go shopping for a house, that's fine. Let's build that in. And, um, what's the other thing? Oh, the other, so okay. we'll just need to be able to walk the property. Uh, like once every two weeks, we need to, you know, at least uh, have you make it available to us once every two weeks to have a different contractor or somebody else come in. Cause we'll be using that time to plan and maybe get pictures or something comes up and uh, another investor wants uh, to ask a specific question or visit the site. Okay. I gotcha. And uh, so I would have to make the home available until I'm vacated every two weeks until. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like with lead times. Day. Yeah. We just need to be able to book times to, to visit and you can either be there or not. It really won't matter that much. Okay. All right. Um, and also if need be, if I needed some kind of confirmation from you as far as from a realtor or anyone that I'm purchasing a home from that you will be, you know, I'm making confirmed payments uh, every month to my account for this. Property. Oh, yeah. So you're going you're planning on using this as part of the income you're reporting to get a, a loan for the next property. Right. OK. Yeah, because like I told you, know, like I told Calvin, um, this home was paid cash for. I, yeah. you know, I paid cash for it. But I don't I didn't have plans for a mortgage, you know, and I'm free and right. clear with this home. So. Uh, I have no, you know, I just pay my taxes and just the basics, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty good right now. So nice. I just want to make sure that if I do, yeah, <laughs> if I do get back into this, I mean, uh, first of all, I want to find another property that's going to be suitable for my needs. And then right. in, in the area too, that I, I'm, I'm comfortable with. And then also the price range is going to have to be affordable for me, um, you know, and um, that way I'm not, you know, in case something happens down the line, I don't want to have to worry about finances, about losing my home, you know? Yeah, exactly. Of, you know, yep. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so yeah. guess who I just got off the phone with right before this call? Who? A lender. And so I was calling a guy I've had several loans with before. And I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of more creative finance stuff to, these days. And I need somebody I can refer my sellers to because we also purchase houses subject to existing mortgages which means we buy it and we leave the loan in place the seller will leave the loan in their name and we just make the payments for them well the challenge is they have to find a lender after that who's willing to let them pull a second mortgage to buy their next house and a lot of lenders right. don't don't like to play that game and so i just got off the phone with right. i think he's my favorite lender at this point he said dude i'm cool with that 
send them my way. I, I will I will <laughs> discount their debt to income ratio to make up for it. If if I know you or another investor that knows you is good to make payments on the property, then I'll discount it from their debt to income ratio and we can get them qualified for a new loan. He's like, I'm here to do business, man. So, <laughs> right. and he works nationwide. So I may have to connect yeah. him with you uh, so that you can, you know, get okay. pre-qualified. Pre, pre yeah. Right. I mean, as you know, I mean, the way that the market is now, I mean, homes, there's not a, enough homes for to meet the supply and demand of, of the market. And that's what's driving home prices up. And a nice home like this on an acre of land um, in, a, in a decent neighborhood that I have now currently, I wouldn't have a problem selling this house if I just yeah. put it on the market. Yeah. How much would you get for I it? I wanted to do it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I probably get one. I'm pretty sure more than what I paid for it. Um, at the time of when we had this house under contract, my realtor was told in um, my family that um, the house, they had two offers that were higher than what we had put in on the house that uh, people were, you know, because back, back in April and May last year, the, the market was so, so crazy. Like, you know, how homes were going on under contract in one day, you know, yeah. literally, you know, oh, yeah. property. So, so, I mean, yeah. So I, I really believe her when she said that there were two offers higher on this property than we had offered, but we were already under contract. So they, you know, the, the seller actually stuck with the man that took the offer and we you now were able to close on, on the plan. Nice. So that being said, yeah, that being said, I mean, if I just wanted to say, so you know what, tomorrow, I don't want to live here anymore a realtor you know i wouldn't have i don't think this house would be on the market maybe a week or two at the most yeah i mean yeah, yeah. now have you have you sold so, a house I mean, with a realtor before uh no not, no do you know so, no. and i asked that question because some people don't realize that it costs money to sell i didn't know for the longest time that it cost money to sell the house oh, did you know that yeah Yes. Oh my yes. goodness. Yes. That, that was an ambush waiting yes. for me yes. and I didn't know about it. <laughs> oh, I like to help people understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, yeah. I know I would have to pay the realtor and there's other fees as yeah. well. Okay. But, I mean, as far as the asking price, uh, you know, being what kind of house this is, I wouldn't be surprised if I would get above my asking price. If someone found this house, if this was the house someone has been looking for, and they find it and they would probably be willing to pay more than what I was asking. So, I mean, I know at this point, I mean, the market is definitely in this as a seller's favor right now, not the buyer. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, I mean, and that, uh, yeah, that being said also gives me a little bit of extra caution now going out. If I were to consider this, I would be a buyer myself. I would be right. competing against more of, you know, other people as well. So that's another reason why I would ask. You know, I would have more time to try to locate another place. So 30 days definitely or 90 yeah. days definitely would be yeah uh, adequate time. That's a lot more comfortable. Something. And I made that same offer to a friend yeah. of mine. He was shopping for a house. He's got five yeah. kids in a three bedroom house and it's crazy. And he's shopping for a house. And I so I told yeah. him, listen, dude, go refinance your house, pull your extra cash out now. And then use that cash as yeah. your down payment while you shop for another house. And I'll sign a purchase agreement exactly. for this guy. It's a guy I know. I said, I'll give exactly. you six months. And as soon as you execute on your next house, then you give me 30 days and I'll close on this one. And that way you can know right. that you've got this one sold ahead of time and you can shop comfortably without having to move twice and all that exactly. weird stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, a house like this. Uh, what is your name again, sir? Caleb. Oh, Caleb, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, a house like this, Caleb, uh, say if we were in Savannah with the acre of land that I have, would easily go for eight, nine hundred thousand. Easy. Oh, I know it. Savannah's I mean, huge, I mean, crazy, yeah. crazy market. Yeah. 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 Are, how far outside yeah. of uh, yeah. Macon are you? Are you like 45 minutes away from Macon? Uh, oh, gosh. I don't, I think like an hour or so. It's not okay. Too I, far. I, I was just looking at the map trying to figure out what the. Oh yeah, hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah you okay. may be able to check it. I don't even disconnect from you trying to find out. Can you tell me how far it is exactly when you find uh, out? Yeah, sure. Where did that go? Yeah, while you're doing that, yeah, the property also has a well too. That it's not operating, but there is a well present here, right behind the back of the house. So that's a plus too to have a a, a well that you could utilize if you. 
you know, decided to do so for water. Oh, it's an hour and a half. I had the wrong scale on the map. My bad. That's about <laughs> okay. 90 miles. Yeah. Okay. 90 miles. Yeah. And that's about how far it is from here to Savannah. About yeah, you're right in the middle. Miles, yeah. Right in the middle. Yeah. Savannah's coastal and all that stuff. Yeah, you're a great midpoint. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do have a well here. So I don't know. What would you guys do with the well? If, Nothing. Would you just leave it as is? Or? Yeah, we would leave it. I, I, okay. Yeah, we really wouldn't bother it. Unless Timmy's going to fall okay, down it, then we'll it. put a cover cover on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Well, yeah, let me just go ahead and check and see what I can if I find anything and um, get you know in touch with the realtor. And then, but yeah, first and foremost, but you haven't really gave me an answer as far as the, the amount of my down that you'd be able to give me, Max. So we generally we're uh, because we're buying multiple properties around. Uh, we try to use our down payments wisely, so we're trying to spend five to ten thousand dollars on down payments. But yeah. that, that doesn't sound like a whole lot for you to make a down payment on another property. No. But uh, we'll see what so we can I mean, do there. Be, yeah, so you may have some wiggle room if it's going to cause a problem for me getting another property. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why we all got to work together to make sure if if this to, to try to make this a deal that works for everybody all at the same time. Right. Okay. So basically, if we do come to an agreement and you put together a contract and I sign it, the closing would be here in Swainsboro. Yeah, we could do it at a local title company, so you could drive to it. I I've done remote closings. I bought a property in Michigan. I still haven't seen the property. Yeah, I bought okay. it in September. So, I've, I've never seen the property. Except pictures. Right. <laughs> right. So would you be physically coming here to see the property or no, we do something? Oh, no. Okay. Uh -huh. Would uh, Calvin, would you be coming or? We're, we're both remote, Bernard. So we would have an inspection done. And okay. Pictures taken, but we're, we're typically, we typically don't go to the properties gotcha. in person and before we close. Now, sometimes, gotcha. okay. sometimes we'll find a local investor as well and ask them if they want to join in on the project. Um, sometimes just having that street-to-street -street knowledge of the local market is, is valuable to us, and we'll bring somebody else on. Right. But somebody, okay. yeah, somebody will end up showing up. It'll be one of our representatives or somebody who's a prospective partner in the deal. Gotcha. Okay. Now, as far as like the stove and um, all that refrigerator, I, I'd be welcome to take all of that, my washer and dryer. Uh, I imagine so. Generally, the stove stays, but other appliances we can we can figure it all out. I mean, we can all we can write it all into the offer, right? Okay. So okay. if if you're going to yeah, tell me there's a hard requirement important. that you have to be able to take your stove, then that's life. I got to deal with it. <laughs> so, hey, Bernard and Caleb, um, yeah. I actually have to get this call. I'm, I'm doing a conference call from my phone caleb do you do you guys want to continue this conversation and caleb i can send you bernard's number yeah that'd be great okay i sorry about that but i've i've got to i gotta take this call but bernard you're in good hands with caleb he is my partner so anything he says you know i'm in agreement with sounds good thanks calvin all right we'll talk to you soon thanks i'll call you right back how are you uh, Caleb? Yep. Hey. Oh, hey. All right. So where were we? We are talking about uh, down payments and you taking the stove and... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a little stuff, a little knickknacks uh, that yeah. I would like to know prior to me even considering doing all of this, but... Yeah. Um, so now, far, do you, I'm do you have any idea how much that would rent for if it was just a regular rental? Any idea what that would rent for? Can you say that again? A rental? Yeah, if we made that just a plain rental instead of a bed and breakfast, do you have any idea what the rent would be in your area? Oh, I do not know what rent would be. That's um, fine. For that, uh, because there is a bed and breakfast not far away, um, but I don't know how much they charge for that. Yeah, um, and I, I looked room, on Airbnb. Uh, there's, there's nothing in... Your yeah. town, that's an actually an Airbnb. So it would be like an official bed and breakfast that you guys are talking about. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much the going rate would be for a room, you know, once everything is, you know, restored and, and you've actually officially opened this place up as that. I don't know how much you could get per room. I, mm -hmm. I have no idea. You would have to investigate more on that. I'm not sure. Okay. Sometimes local, uh, like a, the homeowner know, has like local insights to help me understand. But I, I know how to generally do that sort of research. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would be afraid to tell you something and it would be inaccurate. So you would have to actually do your homework and check on that. I'm not sure on that that question. Yeah. But um, let me think of anything else that might be of concern to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, my main concern is actually, you know, being able to get back into another home, yeah. you know, that's going to be suitable for me and large enough for all of my stuff. Yeah. And, you know, also my moving expenses as well. Okay. See, so, um, yeah, that's another thing too, uh, Caleb. I mean, would you guys be upfront with like saying paying for my moving expenses since the monies that you're giving me would probably be going down on a down payment toward my new home? So well, would so for us, the, just to be clear, for us, the no? upfront cash for us is just all the same no matter where it ends up getting spent. So, Hold on, hold on. You're you're cutting out. I mean, I only, I'm only getting bits and pieces of what you're saying. I don't know. Um, let me let me why try you're cutting out like that. Tell me if I cut out again. For for us, the moving expenses and all the other stuff. You know, I I don't really care what we end up calling it. Upfront cash is upfront cash, no matter where it goes. So we can uh, we can work it into a larger down payment or whatever we need to do. As as long as the numbers actually work, did that come through okay? Right. Yeah. So that it would have to be, of course, you know, taken into consideration. You know, yeah. uh, moving expenses for me to move to another location or even another city. You know. Yeah, that makes like, sense. Yeah, I moved to Savannah or moved back to Augusta or wherever. You know, I would have to have funds to do those things. Obviously, I would have to hire movers and that you know what have you. So. Um, but yeah, as long as you're willing to take that into consideration with the offer, you know, when you, the down payment, I should say, that should not be an issue. Okay. Um, any idea what sort of monthly payment you'd like? Because I can kind of work backwards into what numbers will work for us. Uh, now I have to research rent in the area and the, the potential Airbnb revenue. Uh, there's not a lot to compare it with in the area, so it's kind of speculative. But if I know what you're going to want per month payment wise, that'll really help me settle in on where I can, what I can afford. Okay. Well, um, you know, that too, I mean, it would depend on the new property, what I'm getting. I would hate to yeah. put a number there and, and actually find a house that may be pushing that just a little bit tight, you know? So do so, you I mean, plan on spending about the same me. amount on the new house that you sell this one for? Oh, yes, definitely. Most definitely. So the, the payment's going to have to be, you know, substantial for me to be able to afford what yeah. I'm moving away from. Yeah. Okay. So, well, what price I range mean, is that you're shopping I mean, then? Um, you know, it's probably, I mean, with the market the way it is now, I mean, I probably would not be able to find anything under about 180, 75, 180. Yeah. Okay. Ish. I was thinking we were going to end up talking somewhere between 170 and 180. Yeah. So, I mean, a payment, for 30 years with a down payment of what I would be getting from you, yeah, you know, would have to be somewhere, you know, around that area for me to be able to afford that home, you know, because they're not going to sell me the home if I'm not able to have the assurance of being able to make right. that payment. So, now, are you working? You know, uh, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm retired. So, yeah. Okay. Kind of like self employed. So, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, that's the reason why I paid cash for my home. So, there's no stress there. My vehicle is yeah. paid for everything. I don't have a car payment. So, I'm just paying taxes and my utilities. So, I mean, with my self employment, I'm pretty good. So, but you know, that that's up and down. You know, that's not really guaranteed being self employed. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay. So, that's going to be, I think that's our biggest hurdle. All this, all this other conversation is going to fall second chair to uh, whether or not you can get qualified for a loan. Because if you can't do that, then um the seller finances out the window correct correct 
So, um, yeah, I'm going to have, so what is like, uh, like say for a $180,000 home, what's the maximum in your calculations, a monthly payment for 30 years on that type of loan? Yeah. So I've got a calculator here. I'm going to say, so they'll do a conventional loan as low as uh 5% down. No, as low as 3%, but I'll use five for a basic. So yeah. what would that be? $9,000 down payment at 5%. And then they're going to, that's a loan amount of 171,000. You probably get 3.5% interest rate over 30 years. That's a monthly payment of $767.87. Right. And Mm. And that's including homeowners insurance, all that. I mean, because usually no. you take out a loan, you have to. Sorry, that's just no. principal and interest. The uh, the insurance and taxes are going to vary by the where the property is located. Correct. So that being said, we're looking at about maybe in the nine hundred dollar range, give or take. I would expect, yeah, seven sixty seven, mm-hmm. probably add one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars on top of that. So. Nine hundred. Uh, yeah. To a thousand. Nine sixty seven. That's almost. Yeah, about a thousand. Yeah. So, I mean, would you guys be able to do a thousand a month if I were able to find something? Uh, that's doubtful. Well, really, it's the principal and interest. The taxes and insurance, you're paying that separate now already, anyway, right? Yes. So, yeah, that... my taxes on the home this year, my taxes on the home this year was. City taxes here was like eight forty six for this year past, and I applied for the homestead or home own, homeowner exemption, homestead exemption for the year this mm-hmm. year coming. Uh, and so basically, uh, last year I was kind of grandfathered into it, and I only paid fourteen hundred dollars for the you know county taxes, and city taxes were like I said eight forty six. So add that up, you're just over two thousand for the year in taxes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I should have asked about job status first early on. I'll I'll yeah. I'll contact my lender guy and see if he can work with that, but I, I'm having a hard time believing that he will. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, if I had like a gainful employment or whatever uh, yeah, but um, since I'm self-employed, that's not really yeah. something that they can put down on paper as far as income. You know what I'm saying? As far so, as me. So, what cash offer did you guys property. discuss before? Because you haven't had this very long. No, I haven't. No, no, we didn't discuss the cash offer because yeah. he was more or less trying to get it the other way. But it looks like the way we're talking now, and it makes sense. Totally, you know. The only way you guys we're, we're going to be able to do this effectively for me to be able to get a, more, you know, something comparable to where I'm at right now currently. Yeah. Is to do a cash offer. Yeah, or sell with a realtor, yeah. honestly, because um, yeah. either either or a yeah. cash offer from an investor is going to be at a discount, a, a steep discount only. They're not. They're never going to pay full price. It's just because they're out there buying discount yeah. deals. So. Exactly. I don't know. I don't yeah. want to put put numbers in Calvin's mouth, but we're probably upper two figures, not even three figures on that. So it's not it's kind of a waste of time <laughs> to even calculate it. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just being honest and upfront. I don't want you to come up with any surprises. You know, you know everything you need to know now. So yeah, yeah, that, just talk exactly. it over with Calvin. Yeah, yeah, and talk it over, talk it over with him. And if you guys can come up with something, you know, just give me a. A shout. And can I save this number here? This is your cell number? or Yeah, this is my cell. And I, I do creative finance deals all over the place. So if you happen to find somebody else who's willing to sell or finance, I can have the same conversation with them and maybe get to you that house. Oh. That's really, okay. it's really uncommon. Awesome. Actually, it's never happened yet where somebody called me back and said, hey, I found one. Can you negotiate it for me? But if that's what makes this deal work <laughs> for me, then I'm happy to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, I was going to say, Calvin, I don't know if you guys could, um, in the same time, I mean, I would be looking maybe in the Savannah area and something that's not in too bad of an area in Savannah, I might consider moving there. So if you were to find a property in Savannah that's comparable, I mean, it's not going to be as big as this house, I know, but, you know, something over 2,000 square foot, I could probably work with three bedroom, two baths at the smallest. If you find something comparable, I mean, you can just 
you know, that you guys can get or that, you know, with the, the terms we're talking about, if they're willing to work with that, with, you know, my self-employment, you know, to say, well, I got a guy, you know, that I'm trying to get a property in Swainsboro. Let me um, see if he's interested in this property here in Savannah. And then, you know, you can just let me know where it's at and I can look at it and I can tell you yes or no, if that's something I want to, you know, I would consider. And then if it's something that I consider, would consider, you know, as long as they're, they're willing to work the terms that you're going to tell them that we're going to do to do the properties and that might, it might work that way as well. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, generally, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be upfront. It's it's very unlikely because when we get something under contract or something that's an opportunity like that, we've got other investors who will end up buying it, and they'll pay us a, a fairly a fairly decent fee to to structure a deal like that. So, I think generally it's going to be yeah, okay, the gotcha. the onus is probably going to be back on you if you find something that you want negotiated and they're already and you've already got them to the point where they're like, yeah, they'll consider seller finance. Then, yeah, plug me in and I'll I'll help you get it. Okay. We we might be able to do it that way. But yeah, in the meantime, talk it over with Calvin and see if there's other ways that you, if you guys want to still, you know, pursue this property and then just get back at me and let me know what you're thinking. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Have a good day. All right. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, man. Not motivated. Not motivated, number one, right off the bat, I told you when he said it, I mouthed it to the camera, not motivated. <sighs> Come on, Calvin. And he hadn't discussed a cash price. We got to get those cash prices out there, man. They have to They have to believe that seller finance is the solution to the problem that they have. I should have asked him what happens if he doesn't sell it, but he wasn't. Wow, that really, I really should have dug in there. Also finding out that he didn't have a job sucked. He's not going to qualify for a loan. This deal's dead. I'll have, Cal I'll have Calvin call him back and give him the bad news. Well, see ya.